Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Alex Hubbard. I'm a senior systems administrator. I have over 15 years of experience in the IT industry. Uh, in the last video, I showed you guys how to create a virtual switch and a port group in VMware ESXi. Uh, today, what we're going to do is the two domain controllers we did in the very first video uh, that I posted up here. Uh, we're going to assign a static IP to both of them. We're going to install the DHCP and DNS roles and we're going to work on installing the Active Directory roles as well. So what you need to do is log into your VMware host and open up lab-dc01 and we're going to give this a static IP. We're going to right click on the start menu and go to settings. We're going to click on network and internet. Once you're there you're going to click, uh, connect to, or click on ethernet and you're going to change adapter options. You're going to right click on the adapter. In this case, we only have one adapter on this virtual machine. We're going to go to properties. And we're going to click Internet Protocol version 4, IPv4. Right now, it's set to obtain an IP address automatically and obtain DNS server address information automatically. Uh, since there is neither uh, a DHCP server nor a DNS server on uh, this virtual switch at this point, there are no addresses associated with this. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to give this an IP of 10.10.10 .10 and the subnet mask is going to be a 255.255.0 uh, 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 which will be a slash 24 CIDR or classless interdomain routing. Um, we're going to give it a gateway of 10.10.1 if there were a gateway that's what I would make it. Since this is going to be a domain controller and have D and a DNS server um, we'll point it to uh, its, pri its preferred DNS server will be itself, so 10.10.10.10. .10 .10 .10. Uh, the alternate DNS server will be 10.10.20, which will be domain controller 02. So we'll click OK. We'll click OK there. It's going to go to identifying. While that's doing that, we're going to come over to DC02 here, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go right-click on the Start menu, come up to settings, uh, network and internet, ethernet, change adapter options, right click on it, properties, IPv4. We're gonna set it to use static addresses. We're gonna give this one an address of 10.10.10.20. And it too is gonna be a slash 24. Give it a gateway of 10.10.1. Um, this one, the preferred DNS, 10.10.10.20 itself. Uh, the way I was taught, you always want to have the uh, pr preferred DNS server uh, on a DNS server be pointed to itself. Uh, some guys will use the loopback address of 127.0.0.1. Um, I've always been taught to use the IP address of the machine itself. So we'll click OK. We'll click OK. It's going to go to identifying. We're going to come back over here, we're going to open run and command, and we're going to ping across and see if we can hit 10.10.10. .10. We can. Okay. So then we'll come back over to our DC01 here and make sure we can ping it. Oh, we can ping from it to DC02, which we should be able to. 10.10.10.20. We can. Okay, perfect. So now, now we've just assigned static IPs to both of these virtual machines here, and now we can work on installing the uh, the different roles. So let's go here. Let's open up Server Manager right here. Or that. Make this bigger. We're going to go to Manage, Add Roles and Features, and we'll click Next. We're going to select Role-Based or Feature-Based Installation. We'll click Next. Uh, we're going to pick our local server here. We'll hit Next. And the roles we are going to install will be DNS. It's going to ask to add DNS server tools. That's fine. DHCP. DHCP server tools, that's fine. And we are going to add uh, Active Directory domain services. 
going to add these extra features. You can click Add Features. And you can go ahead and click Next. Accept all those defaults. Next. 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 Um, since this is not a production environment, I recheck Restart. That's fine. Yes. Install. And now it's going to prepare, prepare the installation. While that's doing that, we're going to come over to DCO2 here and do the same thing. We're gonna open it up, and close out of this stuff. So we're good with that for now. We are gonna go to server manager. We're gonna go to manage, add roles and features. Oh, give it a second, sometimes I jump the gun there. <laughs> Let's go to add roles and features. Next, role-based or feature-based install, DCO2. We're going to pick Active Directory Federate. Oh, excuse me. That's not the right one. Cancel. And check that. We want Domain Services, Add Features, we're going to add DHCP, and we're going to add DNS. We'll, this will be this DHCP server will be a separate video. We'll configure failover. So for the moment, we'll install the role, uh, but we're going to disable. We're going to leave it disabled. So click Next, Next, Next. Keep going through it. Again, restart since it's not production. And it's going to start the installation. Okay, now we've got the roles completed on DCO1. We're going to close this. We're going to check on DCO2 here. Come over to console. All right, looks like everything's installed. We're going to jump back over to DCO1 since this is going to be our primary domain controller here. And we'll hold our FISMO roles. All right, so go to this flag here, and we need to configure the domain controller. So this is going to be a completely new, completely new forest, new domain, everything. Um, so what we'll do is we'll give it uh, lab.lan. That'll be our domain. Okay, so the forest functional level will be 2016, domain functional level 2016, there is no 2019 yet. We'll give it a directory services restore mode password. And we're going to click next. Uh, this is this error message here is normal. We're going to click next. That bios name, that's fine, we can leave it as lab. Um, I'll typically leave all the sysvol, NTDS uh, paths, you know, as as this, you know, as this uh, as the default. I don't I don't really play around with those at all. Um, possibly in bigger environments, you might need to change that, but I, I don't. Um, we'll do next, click next. It's going to run its flight check here. It should pretty much come back almost clean. You'll see that DNS error pop up. Okay, so these are just some uh, information, uh, or just some, not warnings, but it's just, just information for you to be aware of. Uh, it says all prerequisite checks have passed successfully. Click install to begin the installation. So we'll click install. This will take a couple minutes to do this. And this is on DC01. Okay, now the rules have been installed. The system is rebooting. Once it comes up, you should be able to log back in. Okay, now that we have gotten the rules installed, we can come to the start menu and go to settings and go to system. And this will verify it's now on the domain. We go to about and system info. And now it'll tell you that the domain is lab.lan. So now you can see that this, this server is now on a domain. So let's close that. Um, the other thing we need to do here yeah, we'll play with the HCP after. Let's go to DNS. Let's create a couple of zones here. Make this big so you guys can see it. And the forward lookup zone you can see has already been created, so lab.lan. We need to create a reverse lookup zone. So we'll do a new zone. Click next. We're gonna give it a, uh, it's gonna be a primary zone. We're gonna do next going to allow it to go to all DNS servers running on domain controllers in uh, the lab.lan domain. Uh, we're just going to do IPv4 for now. 
and we're going to give it 10.10.10 .10 as the uh, first three octets there. Only allow secure uh, dynamic updates. We'll click finish. Now we have a reverse zone for our uh, lab.lan here. So we'll close out of that. We'll close this. Let's come over to DC2 and open up the console. And we are going to let's see here, promote the server as a domain controller. Uh, we're going to add a domain controller to an existing domain. So in this case, lab.lan. And we're going to change credentials, administrator. This is bad practice using the administrator account, but this is what we have set up for the moment, and I haven't gotten to that part of it. Um, so we'll click OK. Nope, actually, that needs to be lab administrator and your password. Click OK. Click Next. And this is going to be a DNS server as well. It's also going to be a global catalog server. And give it a directory services restore mode password. Uh, site name is just default first site name. Yep, that's normal. That's fine. Next. Uh, this is where you can tell it to replicate from which domain controller. In this case, we only have one other domain controller. So we, I mean, we can leave it as any. But if you wanted it to replicate from a specific domain controller, that's where you would tell it to do so. Again, the paths, I keep them default. Uh, review settings. Um, what's kind of cool about this config tool is it will actually generate a script. If you wanted to look at this, um, if you ran this script in PowerShell, it, it would actually do the same thing as the config, uh, this config uh, setup here as well. So we click Next. And give it a few minutes to uh, do its thing here. It's going to run through its pre prereq checks, uh, just like it did on DC01. Here we go. So a couple of a couple of announcements or warnings. Um, we'll click install, and now it's going to install. It's going to join this to the domain. It's going to promote it as a domain controller or another domain controller in the in the domain, and it's going to reboot itself. And you can see. Uh, now the server or domain controller 2 is rebooting and you should be able to log in with your domain admin credentials once this uh, comes back up into Windows here and we'll verify that it is now on the lab.lan domain. Okay, so DC2 is rebooted now. Let's log into it. Yep, okay, lab administrator. It's going to use the uh, please wait. All right. Now that this is coming up here, give it a second. Yep, go to settings. And we will go to system about system information. And you can see it's now on lab.lan. So if yeah, let's close this guy here. All right, let's verify if replication is happening. And we'll open up PowerShell. We'll do a CD backslash. We'll do a rep admin show repl. And yep, you can see that it was successfully replicated to uh, or, or from DC01. And we'll do a, I think it's repl. Hold on. REPL summary. So we'll get the summary. Okay, so it shows it's replicating. Source source uh, domain controller is DC01. Destination is DC02. Um, this is uh, you know it should, if if there are any errors, it would show you under this uh, this error part here or show fails. This is this is acceptable. So that sh what that shows you is you've set up. Oh, we've set up lab DC01 and DC02 appropriately and that they are replicating between the two uh, domain controllers successfully.
Guys, thank you for watching. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe below. Leave me a comment below. Turn on the little bell notification so you get uh, notified every time I upload a new video. Um, you can also follow along. I have a personal blog site, uh, achubbard.com. I have some write-ups over there as well.